Hello race fans and welcome to the Phoenix International Raceway here as we are getting ready for some one mile flat flat banking short track racing. I am Michael Norman, the voice of the Budweiser All Pro Series, being joined in the commentator's booth today by two Budweiser All Pro Series drivers. They are Kyle Matthews and Seth Cole. Gentlemen, welcome to the booth. Good to be here. I haven't been, I haven't done one of these things in a while. And of course, a uh, good track to be able to do it at too here at Phoenix. I mean, we've we've had some interesting tracks down the home stretch. We've got the, the big one, Daytona next week. So this is the pre but uh, you know the reconfigured ISM raceway. It should be interesting to kind of see what storylines we'll have going into that regular season finale. Yeah, Are you saying there's going to be a big one at Daytona? Uh, I mean, there's always a chance. He's right. There's always a chance for the big one at Daytona, just like there's always a chance for a big one at short tracks, too, if somebody gets spun right in the middle of the racetrack and it quickly blocks up the racing surface. But, you know, we're going to see these cars dive down well below that yellow line through these corners trying to arc it and get as much run and momentum as we can. A uh, very unique front row uh, this coming into this week. We've got Laura Chung, a playoff contender. On the front row, alongside of her, is Zachary Fitzwater. Zachary hasn't really had some good showings as of late, but here he is putting that number four Stuart Haas Racing forward in the front row for this race. Yeah, but he's going to need a lot of help in regards to having a chance at the playoffs. Time's running out. He's 34th in the point standings. He's, he's a long ways away from that cut line. Uh, he didn't have a good run last week, so he dropped a couple of spots in the standings. I know that ISM, more often than not, is usually one of those track position type tracks, but honestly, even if he wins here today, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility to say he's got to win two of these next two races if he's going to make it into the playoffs. And even then, he may have coming short. Now, of course, we've got the stages, so you know if he's able to get some stage points here and at Daytona, maybe that'll help him as well. But I honestly think you're in a must-win situation in both weeks if you're the four car. Well, we're in Phoenix, and in NASCAR, the Phoenix has been good for that four car and Kevin Harvick, so uh, he's definitely hoping that... He's definitely hoping that, that he has the same kind of luck here. He can definitely use it. Absolutely. As uh, as always saying that on non-restrictor plate racetracks, we are having no cautions in between the stages here. So uh, when the stage ends, these cars just keep racing as it should be. A very interesting storylines coming into this. We'll, we'll take care of those as the race progresses. Right now, we're going to go track side and get the opening ceremonies here. At Phoenix. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rest we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there
Sports, famous words in motorsports. Please welcome our Grand Marshal, star of CW's Riverdale, Lachlan Monroe. ISM race car fans and NASCAR fans around the world, are you ready to shake and bake? Drivers, start your engine! Engines are fired here at the ISM Raceway, also known as the Phoenix International Raceway. And guys, with it being reconfigured now and what was once turns three and a four or now one and two being so flat, these drivers can really dive it off into that corner. Yeah, they're not afraid to do that for sure. I mean, you can get I'm just seeing five, three, six wide at times. It's really crazy. I have to say that this is one of the most confusing layouts for a track I've seen in quite some time. You know, while I like both configurations, the old Phoenix and the new Phoenix, I, I have to say I do like the configuration where you've got the flatter corners being three and four, the, the now one and two for this configuration. And just based on the fact that, as I just said, it's a flatter area, you do have the apron that's able to be a viable choice as well. It makes things a little bit more exciting, more options for the drivers to try and make it really close for the finish, whether it's for the win or whether for a spot inside the top ten. Your options aren't quite there when you go into the higher bank, now turn three, uh, coming around here through the dog legs. So, uh, you know, just, just personal preference, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe turn three, four, game day will be a deciding factor into, you know, somebody having a playoff position, but... I remember a couple weeks ago, Michael, I said this at New Hampshire. I didn't think it was outside the realm of the possibility we could end out the season with having 16 or more drivers go to victory lane. The scenario we've got coming into this race is really, really close for drivers even having a shot of pointing their way in. Right now, we've got a total of 13 drivers inside of the playoffs that have gone to victory lane. And we got two that are just on the outside of the cut line. Two-time winner William Brock, of course, going to victory lane last week at Indianapolis. Allie Rain, those two drivers are 11 and 17 points, respectively, behind 25th in the standings cut line. It is mathematically possible that leaving here today, if we have another driver go to victory lane, we've got 16 different race winners inside the top 25 in points going into a wild card race at Daytona International Speedway. And that's always going to be interesting to say the least. Like you said, you covered it with the uh, covered it with the wild card spot and everything going in here. You've got a bunch of drivers here, hungry drivers looking for their first wins and some at multiple wins. I mean, for once, you know, we talked about this the last time we co-commentated a race there, Seth. Uh, Anthony McCurry has been getting some really, really bad runs lately, but here he is qualified inside the top ten. Yeah, usually had horrible starting track position, to your point, which translated into horrible finishes, but... Sixth place for the Daytona 500 winner. He's kind of uh, he's kind of stalled out the sliding down the standings to seventh in points coming to this race. We'll see if he can climb back up. Well, here we go. Through what is now turns three and four, the slightly more banked turn into the restart zone. Here we go. Green flag is out. We're underway here at Phoenix. All 38 drivers made it to the green flag. Look at them already fanning out three wide. The bell, I believe, there. That bright yellow Spire Motorsport Chevrolet. Uh, I don't know. One and two remind me an awful lot of New Hampshire, and that's where Christina picked up that victory to right now have her in a playoff position. And look who's right behind her. Her Spire Motorsports teammate. Both the Spire cars inside of the, the top five for a good portion of that New Hampshire race? Yeah, yeah, they were. Other, you know, Madeline Crutcher had her problem with, with pitting and everything, but right. for the most part, yeah, after the first pit stop, they were in the top so They were in the top five. Oh, we're four wide. I see four wide back there. So uh, Cologne was in the middle of that. That's, that's never good. If they go four wide, it looks like they're keeping it together for now. And they're not going to stop either at this point right now. Is the question. That's Nick Gunther. I think that's James Qualls up on the top. Allie Rain in the middle. Remember, she's in a very precarious... That's William Brock and Allie Rain right there in the middle of that four wide. The two drivers oh, are back in the top 25. As we're leaning on each other, they still... Oh, there they go in the back! Oh, Dylan... Dylan Poteet involved in it, too. 
Oh, look at the big stack up right here. Ma wow, Shelton, Shelton stalled out. I think her engine's just gone. Yeah. RJ Bishop might have just been stuck. I don't really think he might have been part of it. Cody Lamas. Yeah, Cody and Lamas and others here. RJ's just yeah, a couple this... hours drive from uh, Avondale, Arizona. This was uh, this was a home track for him today. Lap four and already making pit stops. It was inevitable that that was going to happen. They kept going four wide and leading on each other, and one car stays out. I believe that's the five car. Oh. What was it? What was it you said, Michael, about how if something happens here, there's not a whole lot of room to maneuver your way around a wreck, especially there on the back straightaway with the the wall separating pit road from the racetrack. Uh, we just saw a case in point right there. Right there, as you see, Kyle Matthews has the only one to stay out. Looks like he wants some type of bonus points. Uh, the 20 car stays out as well. Kind of surprised about that, really, if you think about it, because if he was in the wreck, keeping an eye on Laura Chung here, she has the first pit stall. Looks like it's going to be gas and, o gas and go for Jovan Anderson in the 9 car. Here, and Anthony Mercury probably as well. Well, we, I mean, we can quickly go back and look and see what happened to bring out that accident, too. Uh, strategies already here. We have some guys staying out, some guys taking fuel only, some guys taking tires. This should be interesting. A look at the 42 of Bobby Frazier here. Oh, the 62 out of shape as well. We're going to look at this. It would be coming out of the turn here. You see Charlie Buxton on the inside here. I think maybe... Oh, he's five wide behind. Qualls gets the left rear of the 62. He had, I think that was, who was that? Qualls, uh, uh, yeah. Qualls in the... Got the... 10 underneath him who had the 6 underneath her and the 11 the 45 Benjamin Miles trying to stay in the top 25 in points they're just had a part of a racetrack where there's just absolutely nowhere to go for all these guys have a very narrow part here on the here on the straightaway and Cody Lamas the only other two the only the one of the three two-time winners this season involved in it as well and this is a very tough break for for James Qualls too I mean last week at Indianapolis he came so close to picking up his first victory but just could not get around the four, the 47 car in the end and ended up finishing second place you know that's not that bad of a of a poor showing there i don't see a lot of damage on a lot of those cars so we'll see if that the performance is affected at all by what just happened so i couldn't tell shelton took a hard shot in driver's side door of Benjamin Miles. I think she got hit from behind. It might have been the 66 of Matthew Rodriguez, who, remember, based off of the playoff grid you saw there earlier on, he is the last driver right now, points-wise, that would be in a playoff position. So, uh, at 66, not exactly starting out this Phoenix race the way he wanted to. Oh. Jessica Shelton is out of the race, as you see there on the standings. That did not, that, that crash damage there, and Amazingly, that we only had one retiree from that big wreck. Oh, so far. We'll see what happens as this could bring lap cars. We'll see if we're going to be getting the one-to-go signal this time by as these drivers cross the start-finish line. Again, uh, I remember a couple of weeks ago, Jessica Shelton had some issues at New Hampshire, and I mentioned the fact that, you know, there's a couple of drivers that are way up there in the point standings, like Shelton, like McCrory, Jonathan Zorlin, Cole Baker. They can afford to have a couple bad performances here down the home stretch of the regular season since they already have that trip to victory lane and a pretty good points cushion over that cut line. Uh, Shelton with another DNF here today. I'm not saying that she absolutely has to, but I would I would think that if you're that 10 car, you're looking at at least a top 10, top 15 next week, just to, just to make sure that you're not going to be in a perilous position to drop outside the top 25 and lose out on a playoff position. But she, she still had a good gap. She was 14th in points coming to this race, had a pretty good gap still, about 45 points back to 25th in the stands coming to this one. So obviously doesn't want the DNF, would have loved to have finished out this race, but... Uh, still trying to do everything to be in the postseason to battle for the championship. Absolutely. Here, we're going to quickly go through your top 10. Kyle Matthews right now, the 20 of Reggie Fogelman. you got Jovan Anderson. You've got Anthony McCurry, the 15 of Charles Buxton. Colin Cropley in the 19. you got Laura Chung, Zach Buchanan. Or I almost said Zach Buchanan. Wow. Zachary Fitzwater. And the 23 of Nathan Orman. And Ali Rain will round out the top 10 as these cars back to green, single file. And I do see one car lagging back here, and that is Cody Lamas. So we had some interesting, had some different strategies right there under that caution. We saw the five car stay out, the 20 car stayed out, some cars behind them took fuel only, some took tires. We're going to see what prevails here. We're still very early on in this race. That caution came out on lap number four, I believe. 
I'm gonna be curious about this 20 car, see if he was up to speed, because we know Fogelman did get a little bit of that incident off of turn three, or off of turn two rather, and onto the back straightaway. Uh, apparently, he's still up to speed. Looks like that car is pretty good in pretty good shape right now. I would have been mostly concerned about the tires because he went for a slide. I thought you'd have flat spotted those good years, but uh, I guess they thought track position was more important than coming down and getting those fresh tires. Jonathan Zorline booting the seven car out of line, and we're going to see a lot of that here as, so, you know, it's going to take, sometimes it will take the chrome horn to, to get around a couple of cars here. Henry Sanford, there's the 31 back here. Trent Dunham, there's William Barack right here. Back around Seth Cole and others. So Brock needs to really get a good run as Alley is in the top 10 right now. Here's the thing for William Brock and Alley Rain, as opposed to a couple of weeks ago, they now know the drivers that they're gunning for and have to finish ahead of. Really, they're looking for the two of Dylan Young, the one of Trent Dunham, uh, maybe even the three of Cole Deaver. Those are the drivers now that they have to kind of keep in their rearview mirror to get back up in the top 25 because uh, Rain and Brock, uh, they were mired down quite a ways in the point standings, like outside of the top 30 and had a half dozen drivers they had to finish ahead of. Now the goal is a little bit more clearer in terms of their strategy. Uh, 10 laps left in stage number one. Mind you, stage number one ends on lap 21. Ooh, and Laura Chung almost got to the back bumper of that 15 car. Going to cost her her exit right there, but she's on. She's trying to get up here as well. Looks like, looks like uh, new tires don't seem to be making a huge difference right now. This early on in the race, uh, the five stayed out there, and he's you know holding a pretty decent lead. They haven't really been able been able to do anything with them, and the see the 20 car still hanging on right there in fourth place right now. Much like New Hampshire, it looks like uh, that clean air to the nose trumps any fresh Goodyear she could put on a race car. Yeah, and uh, and it's like Kyle said earlier, these cars were not racing for very long before that caution came out. So, it you know, tires could have equalized by now. As we're looking at Christina Bell, you know, since Christina Bell won at New Hampshire, she has been on a roll. Other than you know, like at Sonoma, she was in position to win. The, Two races back to back until a late race accident involving a car coming out of pit road took her out of contention. And then at Indianapolis, you know, we didn't really talk much about her, but she was still in, in the picture. So she's really, they, they, like I said, the Spire Motorsports team has have really stepped it up in these last couple of weeks. Almost makes me wonder if maybe Spire Motorsports looked at the seven car Madeline Crenshaw said, wow, we've got a really good consistent car here, but we really need to see if we can get both of our Chevrolets in the playoffs. Let's put a little bit more focus on the 77. Obviously, had a really good long run car at New Hampshire, was able to come away with the victory. You mentioned about how uh, all of a sudden it seems like things have turned around. We've kind of seen a, a little bit of a slip up out of that 7 of Madeline Crenshaw. Almost wonder if maybe they were of the assumption that Crenshaw is going to be able to hang on to a spot and get in via points. Put a little bit more focus on that 77 and have uh, double the chance of bringing a championship to Spire Motorsports here. That's very possible. Did you see the move that Laura Chung put on Charles Buxton right there through turn one and two? Just able That's to. Why I love one and two and wish it was three and four. <laughs> it's an amazing area with a lot of options to be able to make passes. Talked about that chrome horn. Usually, that's the only way you're able to make passes over in the three and four of this configuration. Look at her. Cause... Look at her able to carry the speed. And look yeah, now. Look. <laughs> really close on the five, and now look into the inside. Well, maybe here's maybe this is the point of the long run where the tires come into play. Because remember, Laura Chung was the first one off pit road with four fresh tires. It, so it seemed. Take the, lead. take the lead here with just a couple of laps left in the stage. Only one caution, and that was at the very beginning right now. We're going to take a look and see. Oh, Bobby Fraser with some trouble. A mechanical issue on the number 42 car. He's going to take it behind the wall more than likely. I believe he's going to be done for the day. And Cody Lamas out here just chugging along. That's one more spot for Cody Lamas. Yeah, that's, this answers my question. I, I mentioned the fact that somebody ran hard in the back of Jessica Shelton. Uh, under that only caution, I'm pretty sure it was the 48 with how far off the pace he is now. All right, coming up to two laps left in stage number one. Chung has pulled out to almost a second lead over Kyle Matthews. And 
I'll tell you, if you know, Kyle could be pulling a long-term strategy here, and it could, it might pay off for him. We, we never know. You have no idea what kind of strategy is and isn't going to work at these racetracks. I don't know what the fuel window is either. I was about to say that too. So it's going to be interesting. To see if this thing goes green for really the rest of the way. See if this is out. Cole Baker back here as well. He's been top ten contention almost every week as well. He's fighting to get back into the top 16 in via points as the theoretical white flag is on display for Laura Chung in stage number one. Baker's going to get some good stage points if he can hold on to that fifth position. He was in the 15th seed via points for the playoff grid coming into this one. He knows the situation that we could end up having 15 or 16 different winners up inside the top 25 by next week. And here she comes off of turn number four. Laura Chung is going to take the green checkered flag as she wins stage number one. We're going to wait for a scoring to catch up with itself. And there it is right there. Yep. As these drivers come around the corner, we're going to take a quick commercial break and be right back with more action here at Phoenix. Back here at Phoenix International Raceway, Laura Chung beginning to uh, catch up to some lap traffic here, but she's got about a second and a half over Kyle Matthews, and boy, things are heating up back here for third on back. Kind of surprised, uh, you know, very early on in this race, we saw, you know, a fairly a fairly big wreck brought out the first coffin, but since then, things have really settled down quite a bit. And they really have. A big reason for that though too is you know a lot of our races obviously start off double file everyone's adrenaline's at an all-time high they see a lane they want to go for it sometimes it takes caution to kind of get everybody back to their senses of you know it's still a long ways to go there's a lot of stage points on the table you know settle in let, let, let's not tear this race cup car up this early on you know we talked about uh william brock needing to move up a little bit uh, let's see where he crosses the line at now this lap around. He might have lost a couple spots. He's in the 14th position and he's working his way up from about the from when starting from the middle of the pack. I think he's ahead of Trent Dunham. I believe he's ahead of Dylan Young. He is going to lose out on some points to Cole Deaver who was able to nab that final point in the first stage. But yeah, right now kind of doing what he needs to do. A good performance for the moment out of the 47. And, and, you know, maybe maybe getting that second win last week at Indianapolis might have been a turning point for him. And, you know, nothing helps a driver get their mojo back to capturing a checkered flag. I completely agree to that. We're still waiting to see when. Oh, Kyle Matthews is now coming to pit road. Right, so hey, that, 78 car, that 78 car has really checked out ever since you got the lead. Kyle stays out. Let's let's give him about two or three laps that he could have saved under pacing. So we're looking probably about 22 to 24 laps. There's 20 car make on that road as well. That 20, 20 car. Stayed out under that last caution. Of, the 5 and 20 are both on pit road now. Yep, and the 78 car and them stay out again. So we'll see here. I'd say just about for everybody, we're looking at two more pit stops before the conclusion of this race. That's if a caution doesn't muddy up the waters. It's going to be borderline for that 5 and that 20 of them being able to make it maybe on one more stop. 78, or the 17 of James Moore. He, again, he was also very close. Got the pull. He's been on a kind of a ruckus, if you think about it, at uh, back at Sonoma. When both Aspire Motorsports cars were started in the in the front row, he started third, and by that sharp turn number seven, he was he or he had already spun out the pole sitter, and then at, then he ended up winning the pole at Indianapolis, and unfortunately, due to a bad or due to a very tight pit stop or pit stall and stop, was 
lost a lot of positions and pretty much fell out of contention for the Brickyard 400. So here he is now in second place, and these cars still not coming to pit road yet. Been complete polar opposites for the two RFK cars this season. Uh, Dylan Pote came into this race as the overall points leader, already a victory this season. James Moore has been a struggling rookie campaign, only two top five so far. He's just above that cut line of 25th in the stands. He's 24th in points coming to this race. So uh, that that always seems to kind of perplex me because you would think that if one car out of a certain team is doing well, then both cars or all three cars would do well. But a lot of times you end up seeing where one driver does really, really good and then the other driver really struggles. We are almost halfway through this race, and these cars still have not pitted that, that pit under that yellow flag. So, I guess we're going to see what's going to happen. Uh, here they come right now. Lower Chung coming in. <laughs> More cars coming in, but look at this. Christina Bell staying out. Now, see, if that had been where the start-finish line supposed to be, that would have been a photo finish for that lap lead. <laughs> it still could be a photo finish for the lap lead. The four... Uh, Fitzwater is going to lead the lap. Now this is going to be interesting. Well, are they going to stay side by side trying to? Are they going to try to come be side by side when they come to pit road? That's nope. usually not a good idea. They get things single file. Twenty-two pitting behind them. Or let's go another uh, lap. Nathan Norman, twenty-three XI have twenty. Uh, twenty. I mean, twenty-three XI. They have a win with Benjamin Miles this season, so. Like you said, if one car does good, then the other car should too. This could be bold strategy for that 23. Here's the difference, though. Benjamin Miles, you mentioned, has the victory. But Benjamin's 23rd in points. Nathan Norman doesn't have a victory, and he's 11th in the standings. So, uh, yeah, explain that one to me. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, 10 laps away from the end of stage number two. The right, 23 so right here. Six laps around the max you can make it on a tank of fuel. So these drivers right now... Uh, that just came to pit road can make it roughly to 5960 puts them about four or five laps short uh, the five and the 20 we know they came to pit road about five laps prior so they'd have to come to pit lane around 10 to go or so Kyle and Matthews to the end. I think, yeah, Kyle Matthews has pulled out the stop the stop of his life because he is ahead of the 78 of Laura Chung and it's gonna be by at least a couple of seconds. He's going to have the lead after this whole thing uh, cycles around. Well, uh, other than the 23, which they should have just passed. Yeah, I think they did. So, yeah, it's going to be probably uh, about two and a half, maybe three seconds over the 78 car. We'll see what Kyle can do. And this is a team that really has nothing to lose with this strategy. It's been a really tough season for that fiber. So, uh, you know, why not try something different? Try to salvage something this season, maybe pull off a victory. That's true. To watch the interval between the five and the seventy-eight because we saw Laura Chung take the lead from Kyle Matthews on the last run. Uh, once those four fresh tires started to get their grip and the five tires started to wear away, uh, we'll see if that translates again here into this run or not. How many laps it would take for the seventy-eight to reel in the five? Let's talk about bold strategy. What about the twenty involved in the wreck? On old tires, managed to stay in the top five, and here he is still in the top five after the cycle of pit stops. Well, Kyle talked about it. The five's got nothing to lose. Meyer down the point stands. Reggie Fogelman, same deal. 35th in the point stands, still looking for his first top five. As a matter of fact, it's kind of ironic. The two cars that are playing the strategy are the only two drivers that have not scored a top five yet this season. Well, actually, nope, there's actually a third one. Charlie Buxton uh, has not scored a top five. So two of the three that have not scored a top five this far into the season playing that strategy to try and get their first top five on the year oh something to miss on the 41 car two-time winner this yeah two t has to had to have been maybe a loose tire or something on that for on a loose lug nut or something on that 41 car jonathan's all i'm gonna victories coming into the final two races of the season yeah that's true but he's also still got to worry about that top 25 in the point standings too yeah he's six in points he's fine oh that's true at the interval here between first and second, it really hasn't changed a whole lot, if any. I mean, Matthews has a, like it went down a little bit there to 2.7, but he's had, you know, 2.7, 2.8, 78. So, like we mentioned before, clean air is everything here. Yeah, that's true. The fact that James Moore is reeling the 78 car in kind of uh, 
splitting up Laura Chung's attention out the windshield and in the rearview mirror. Getting closer to the end of stage number two as well. 99 of Charles Samper has creeped into the picture now in the fourth position. He's got a pretty good long run car. Yeah, a couple of seasons ago, Charles Sanford was actually the uh, most winningest driver on the season in, of the season. Hasn't you know since I believe it was before he switched over to the 99, but hasn't really had a decent season since that. But he's just been trying to steadily pick up, maybe regroup, regrow as a team, and see where it puts him at. As we have two laps to go, three laps to go in stage number two. Here's a Charles Samper. More often than not, when we get down to the end of a regular season, based on where the cut line is, I usually look like five spots above that cut line for those drivers to maybe make the last minute moves to victory lane. Well, Charles Samper would fit that. He's 22nd in points coming into this race. If he were to win, he'd be inside the criteria to clinch a playoff position. Yeah, play spoiler. And that could also happen at Daytona next week as well. Good battle well, for second here to end this stage, looks like. And I mentioned that lead hasn't really uh, changed a whole lot. Well, now it's down to 2.2 as soon as I say something. But now these guys are racing side by side for second. That's right. Let's see who's going to get second place. Kyle Matthews is going to go on to win stage number two here. And we'll see if can Laura battle it out for second place. I don't think she can. Kyle Matthews win the stage and Laura Chung comes home in third. As we, as these drivers, we wait for the top 10 to go by. I believe they might, they might have already. We're going to step aside another quick commercial break and be right back with the final 20 laps here at Phoenix. Series data file you have attempted to access is out of date. Uploading current file now. It's a brand new car from stem to stern, and it's never been raced at these speeds. The next gen car is opportunity. Everything is different with the exception of like the seat, the steering wheel, and your helmet. Unknown creates excitement. <laughs> And we are back here for stage number three, the final stage of the race. Kyle Matthews still has about a two-second lead, but it's shrinking ever so slightly. And you know, if he could maintain this, if he can maintain this lead before the next round of pit stops, probably here in about ten in about ten laps or so, then depending on the strategy they take for the final pit stop, Seth and Kyle, you got you know they they could come back out with the lead. He was running second before. Before the uh, first round of green flag pit stops, and you know because he had to, because he had to out, I don't know what five laps earlier, but, um, he was able to come out with the lead. So yeah, if he just holds this position or at least hold within the top three or so, uh, the five could be in pretty good shape here if we don't get any more cautions. Well, with the gap shrinking, could it be the tires, or do you think maybe Kyle is just trying to save something? It's absolutely the tires. To Kyle's point, I'm kind of trying to do the math here of laps since the five was last on pit road. If he can maintain on this run more than 10 laps before the 17 of James Moore gets to his back bumper or the 99 of Charles Samper, it looks like he might be in second place pretty soon. Once he makes that final pit stop, he should be making it around 10 laps to go. I think that he's going to have enough of a race car and enough tires to be able to hold everybody off. But as Kyle said, no caution can come out so that way the strategy works if a caution comes out it changes the strategy up drastically yeah then they'll all come down pit road and possibly at this point be 
good to go on the fuel, but it'll just be more of trying to maintain the lead with the with the money stop being under caution rather than under, under green. Keeping an eye on. Fastest car on the track right now. Oh, let's, let's, oh no. Fa fastest car on the track right now. Or at least have the fastest lap of the race has been set by Cole Baker. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean that the fastest car on the racetrack, though. That, that 99 has been running really good, consistent lap times. Got by Laura Chung. Got by Cole Baker. Now hounding James Moore. Well, let's see. He ran a... Let's, let's, see, what, let's see what the lap times are. Charles Sanford this time by runs at 27.527, a 27.715 for James Moore, and a 28.12 for our leader. If you're coming to pit road, you're going to take on tires regardless. I think if I'm the 99, as soon as that five ducks to pit lane, I'm coming down with them. Well, yeah, especially now that they're right on the back bumper. Look at the 99 car. This will prolong the battle for the lead momentarily here, but Charles Sanford... I don't think it's going to be long, though. That 99 is on the, just the one I right now. Let's not forget here, too. Last season, the championship race was here at Phoenix. This year, though, this season, the, the, the finale is going to be at Auto Club. So, could be Charles Sanford's hometown if he could get into the Final Four. Yeah, home for Sanford. Get a chance to, might have a chance to win a championship at his, at his home track. Oh, he got a little loose there. I think he tried to get back to the throttle to try and get the launch off the corner. Kyle's running right down that yellow line saying to the 99, hey, if you're going to pass me, you got to go around the long way. Kyle's only about maybe three to four laps away. Oh, there he goes. Make that final pit stop. I think the 99 might have used a little bit of the bumper there. Either that or a little bit of the intimidator button. Yeah, maybe got him a little arrow loose. See, look at Kyle trying to fight back on the outside. Sanford going to clear him, and now Moore going to dive down below... Dive down below too. I think as soon as the five gets clear of the seventeen, you might see him start considering to come down pit road, perhaps. Oh, not quite yet. Until he got caught before he makes that final pit stop. Well, if he comes down next this time by, it'll be with I believe twelve laps to go. Yeah, so we're getting right to that window that we were talking about. Sanford takes ten yep. laps to go in this race. Keep an eye out. They're coming up, approaching the lapped car, the soon to, or the, either the lapped car or the soon to be lapped car, soon to be lapped car of Matthew Rodriguez. Two cars, four, Cody Lamas and the 41, multiple laps down in the 40, with the 42 car out with the mechanical Five issue. Five just hit pit road. Yes, yes, he did. Five car is down pit road, so we'll see what kind of strategy this plays out. A very bold strategy by that five team, as Kyle mentioned, pretty much going for it they got nothing to lose even if he were to win today too far down in the point standings to even really matter to be in the playoffs his pit crew nailed the last pit stop he had a huge gap over laura chung so we'll see if they can do it again we imagine that everybody else except for except for the 20 car because so you know the five and the 20 are on the same strategy but we said everybody else should be coming down pit road about like what five to go yeah roughly around i would say laps 57 to 60. well but we've got 10 laps to go time. now i believe the 20 of reggie fogelman came down the same lap as kyle matthews those two were on the same strategy how about the 47 of william brock i just actually noticed he's been creeping his way now up into the top 10 doing what he needs to do to get himself into a playoff position He's ahead of Dunham, he's ahead of Deaver, he's ahead of Young in the running order right now. That's true, he really is. About nine laps to go here. No indication as Charles Sanford gets around the 66 of Matthew Rodriguez, putting him in between him first place and second place right here. Believe it or not, Kyle Matthews wants these guys to run as long as they possibly can because they're continuing to put laps on these tires. He's out there on fresh Goodyear's laying down qualifying lap times. It's going to help him be able to build a gap again with however many laps remaining. If it works out for him, is Alpha third might be closing up. Cole Baker's Chevrolet, Laura Chung's Ford. 17 car got awfully low right there, I thought. Oh, he might be heading to pit road, but he didn't. Well, here it is, lap 57. We'll yeah, see if these... You're going to have some drivers probably 
Come to pit road this lap, I think. All right, let's find out. Not up at the front, anyway. Oh, there's one back there, I think, coming down. Charles Buxton and Anthony McCurry come down pit road. I thought I saw RJ Bishop's on pit road, and so was the 20 stuck on pit road. Something probably going under the going on under the hood there on the 20. Boy, that's tough. Reggie Vogelman, as mentioned, was on the same strategy with Kyle Matthews and been up in the top 10 most of the day because of it. And here we go. See if anybody. You can also remember the 23. The 23 car stayed out more. And speaking of the 23, here's his teammate staying out as well. We had a couple of drivers that wanted to come to pit road, but the 22 of Henry Sanford was blocking their way. Look at Kyle. Kyle Matthews is right in the middle of all this. Oh <laughs> that is a horrible scenario for the five. Kyle Matthews says, Pig, get the, get the F out of my way. <laughs> Oh, now he's getting stuck behind cars that were coming down pit road. The 45 car coming down pit road. Looking at the 22. 22, the 4, they still have to hit pit lane. Where's the 99 in all of this is the question. Oh, Kyle's like, get low, 4, get low. Oh, no. oh boy! Oh boy! There's the accident right there. That's gonna bring out the yellow flag, and it's gonna oh, block up that entire racetrack. The wow. entire racetrack is blocked. Oh, look at the nine, Jovan Anderson on the pit wall. Holy crap, Dylan Poti! Who the heck is the leader? I have no idea. This race is over. So whoever the leader is, the race is gonna end. Wow. Well, that is unless they come down pit road. Yeah, unless they run out of fuel under pacing. Nathan Orman in the 23 and the 4 of Zachary Fitzwater hadn't pit yet. Can wow. Like how, how much did you have in the tank when that caution came out? I have no idea, but we're about to find out because uh, this, this changes everything. Can the 23 pick up a win and knock another person out and Madeline Crenshaw right behind them but I think she's tail end of the lead lap or one lap yeah. down no she's tail end I think unless she's gonna be one lap down when they cross the start finish line again she's gonna be minus one. let's see yep minus one in 16th place well I guess we'll see if Orman comes down pit road and who doesn't and the four, I believe, were the two drivers that had not come to pit lane yet. Stanford on down had already made pit stops. Our pit road is open and he's not coming down. If, if he's not pitting now, he's not pitting at all. He's going to let that thing run out of fuel if he has to. 48's coming down pit road. Mentioned he, 2311 had that victory with Benjamin Miles trying to go for the sweep with both drivers, Nathan Ormond, and this is gonna points coming to this race? That's that's a playoff spot that he'd clinch if he won this race. Yeah, it is. I'm trying to see where the 47's gonna end up. Twenty seventh. Gosh. Such a great run for him. The white flag is displayed for the 23. All these cars, the 23, be before you even get to the 4. 4 pitted. Oh, he did. So Charles Sanford is second place right now, right here. Sanford, Chung, Moore, Baker, Benjamin... Nathan Orman on the first round of green flag pit stop stayed out the longest. Who would have known that further on down the road that was going to be the play that was going to get him the victory here today? And it is. He's, he's not coming. Down the back straight away. And he's not coming down pit road. 
I've actually never seen an NR car run out of gas under pacing before, at least before the race ended. This isn't necessarily a difficult track to save fuel at. No, not at all, and... Actually, with how the pace backs down later on in the run. Well, 20, 23 XI Racing is going to have both of their drivers get at least one victory here in the season as, as Nathan Ormond wins here at Phoenix. Do you want to take a look at what brought out the caution? I mean, kind of... Yeah, that would definitely be interesting. Definitely some ruckus. I'm sure that... I'm pretty sure, like, the, the culmination of it was some drivers that had already pitted and other drivers that were trapped up on the top trying to get to the bottom to pit. Yeah, we're about to find out. Jovan Anderson was definitely a part of that. Found himself on... He was way behind. He was a good place behind this group. Just a big mess coming to pit road. Oh, the four? Car. The, four? Yeah, the 23 just got by that, too. I mean, the four car. Gunther, I think, had already pitted, and the four of Fitzwater wanted down. Oh, and the 47 was a part of that wreck, too. One, two, three. Hendrick, yes. Hendrick Motor. And that. three of the four Hendrick Motorsports cars were involved in that. Cody, Cole, and Anderson. That's what's brought out the yellow and everything. And it's unbelievable. Nathan Ormond gets the victory. And, you know, we talked about to Allie Rain was in 10th, but now finishes 13th. You know, I'm sure there's going to be some, there's some tempers flaring in pit road here as well. Nathan Orman, Charles Sanford, Laura Chung, James Moore, Cole Baker, Benjamin Miles, Henry Sanford, Kyle Matthews, Nick Gunther, and Roberto Crown Jr. round out the top 10. And then Christina Bell, Cole Deaver, Ali Rain, and Stephen Colin finish out the drivers on the lead lap. And then it's the drivers who uh, were also involved in the wreck as well as Finishing a lap down because of all this mix-up here. Zachary Fitzwater, Madeline Crenshaw, Trey Wright, Charles Buxton, Anthony McCurry, Dylan Young, Jose Mills, Charlie Buxton, Sam Ozkin, Colin Cropley, RJ Bishop, Trent Dunham, and William Brock. Unfortunately, after getting himself into the top 10 before that round of pit stops, it will finish back in the 27th position. And it's Qualls, Dylan Pote, Matthew Rodriguez, and Cody Lamas, the, the Finishing out of the drivers who finished, Seth Cole, Daniel Voyles, Jovan Anderson all retired from the wreck before finishing the race. Zorline and Fogelman unfortunately could not get their laps back or pass the three ahead of them. And then rounding out would be Bobby Fraser and Jessica Shelton. And guys, this is going to put a big time damper on these points. Yeah, right now I'm, I'm looking at three different scenarios going into Daytona. The first one is the Alley Rain situation. I don't think she's in the top 25 in points. She gained some, some points on Trent Dunham, gained some points on Dylan Young, finished one spot behind Cole Deaver. So it's going to be really, really close. The bad news for Allie Rain was other drivers above the 25th and Stanis cut line didn't have bad performances. Uh, 22nd through 24th, Charles Sanford, Benjamin Miles, James Moore, they all finished inside the top 10 here today. So that did not help Allie Rain at all. So Allie's not in a must-win situation, but she is going to have to rely on some carnage and a good finish next week at Daytona to get into a playoff spot. William Brock, that 47, is, I believe, in a must-win situation now. If, if he had finished up inside the top 10, I would have put him in the same situation as Allie. But honestly, I think right now that 47's got to get maybe a third win on the season to be able to clinch a playoff spot. Another driver I'm a little bit concerned about right now came into this race in a playoff position, might be leaving without a playoff position going to Daytona. That's Bobby Frazier, had that mechanical problem. He was 20th in points coming to this race, only had, I believe it's 23 points between himself and the cut line. That DNF way down in finishing results could have the 42 in some trouble. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very good. So, Kyle, your thoughts? Oh, uh, interesting race. Oh, chaotic with a big wreck. And then we got into a long green flag run. Looked like things were going to settle down, and we end the race with a big wreck. <laughs> what, what could you say? And a lot of strategy playing out there, too. Yeah, it was. And, and 
Nathan Ormond, I guess the caution definitely helped. I'm not sure if Ormond would have had enough under green to make it to the end. But the caution definitely saved him. Uh, Ford couldn't make it. The 23 wouldn't have been able to make it, I don't think. Not yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I am Michael Norman, the voice of the Budweiser All Pro Series, saying next week we're heading, taking a trip out to Daytona Beach for the Coke Zero Sugar 400, this, the regular season finale here in the Budweiser All Pro Series before the race for the championship begins. For Seth Cole and Kyle Matthews, we, it's been an interesting race here at Phoenix. This is Michael Norman saying... Until we meet again. Phoenix.